Hey coach, welcome back to another episode with my friend Andrew Casal from Valor Accounting. How are you today, Andrew? I'm very well. Thanks, Leo. How are you doing? All well, all well. Uh, thanks for jumping on here again. I'm super excited about talking to you. Well, talking to you about a new topic. Um, so today we're going to be talking about how to pay yourself, right? The the thing all coaches want to know, right? Why have a business if you can't pay yourself? That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't take the stage too too much longer. Over to you, Andrew. Brilliant. No, thanks, Leo. So uh, yeah, as you said, the whole point of you know a business, a profit, a for profit business is is to um, reap the rewards. Yeah. You know. Um, so to speak. So it's about taking how to take money out of your uh, your business. And we're going to look at a few factors here because, of course, we're going to talk about the tax side of taking out money uh, from your business, especially for limited companies, because it's a little bit uh, more complex in, in that area. But we're going to look at kind of the cash management side of it as well, um, as well as like using that information to plan ahead for, you know, and this is good for for growing, you know, not only just startups, but growing businesses uh, as well. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's mainly just about the areas uh, here, cash management, tax, and planning ahead. Nice. So there's two, obviously, we spoke earlier uh, in a previous uh, podcast that there are two type, main types of, business uh, structures you've got the the self-employed which is a sole trader and then you've got a limited company mm -hmm. so what we're going to do is we're going to look at both both sides and how um what are the implications of taking money out okay so first one is as we spoke about before if you're a sole trader uh you know a self-employed Legally speaking, you and your business are the same. And it's good in a way. It's good in a way because that means that you can just pretty much take out money from your business account um, as and when you want to. So that's actually a, quite a good thing to, mm -hmm. to do. You can't run payroll for yourself if you're, if you're self-employed. You can if you're a limited company, but we'll get on to that. So essentially, you can just take out money and that's called drawing so it's you know it's withdrawing money out of the business mm -hmm. now one of the pitfalls of uh of, of this type of business structure is you have to have good cash management because what i you know sometimes i come across clients who they've got a self-employed business and they're taking out too much money and what happens is they are unable to pay um their expenses so they've got to end up putting money back you know so a good cash management is ideal for for this uh type of business structure and and what i would say is just make sure you keep enough money to not only pay expenses um for your business but especially if you're looking to grow leave some money in there to uh to, to reinvest in the business and anything after that that's what you can take. And another thing I'd say is do it on a weekly or a monthly basis and make sure that it's a consistent amount, a consistent amount. Don't just take as and when, you know, record what the amounts they are and and how often. And that will give you some cons consistency when, um, you know, for good cash management. I like that. So I'm going to give the the audience an example of some of the things coaches do uh, i know this is something we spoke to you about and this is this is poor cash management right so a lot of coaches are very bad with managing their money and what they will they, what they will do is because the tax year is ending they've got to pay their taxes they will then run these camps or clinics to try and recuperate the money that then they owe in taxes so essentially what you're trying to say is always keep a percentage of what you make 
so that when we get to the tax year or or the month or whenever you have to pay tax, then you've got that money reserved because a coach that doesn't isn't good with their finances and then depends on running clinics or camps to recuperate that money that they've lost, you know, it's it's a massive risk because you might not make that money in that camp or clinic or okay, it just might, you know, you might it might rain so you can't run the clinic. Uh, you might get ill, so you can't run the clinic, right? So just having better cash management is essentially what you're trying to say, Andrew. Yeah, and you know what? That's such a good point that you mentioned about the tax side as well, because that's an that's a hidden expense. Because when you're when you're running your sports coaching business, you know, if you're paying for, you know, sports facilities or you know, your monthly subscriptions, you know that's coming out. Yeah. But if you're self-employed, you're going to pay tax at the end, at the yeah. end of your, you know, your, your, your accounting year. And you don't, if you don't have an idea of how much tax you're going to pay and you don't, and you haven't made, uh, you know, any sort of um, like a, a savings pot for it or a, um, an allowance for that, then you're going to be hit with a tax bill. And as you said, that's not, that's not a good time. <laughs> that's not, it's not a fun time. Mm. And, Especially another thing as well that I would mention, which is a really important point, is in the UK, when if you're self-employed and your tax bill goes over £1,000, then you are required to pay what's called payments on account. And that is an additional 50% in advance payment for next year's tax. Nice. And you have you would have to pay, yeah, and you would have to pay that. So you have to take that into account. And to be honest, I get a lot of clients who come to me in that position where they're like, I've done their, you know, their, they've come to me last minute and they've maybe done some rough calculations on their current tax point. And then they, they hear about this payments on account and they're not sure what that is. Yeah. And they get hit with an additional 50% tax bill. Yes, it's for next year, but you've got to pay it earlier. <laughs> it's a payment in advance. Yeah. So, um, and that can really hinder their cash flow, yeah, um, really badly. So that's something that's so important. So, uh, thanks for bringing that up, Leo. Yeah, and also I think it it does come down to having a good accountant as well, because if your accountant isn't advising you on stuff like this, then you aren't prepared. That that's it, and that's the thing. If you have an accountant that works with you on a quarterly basis, they can tell you. This is what your tax projections are. Yeah. So this is the amount of tax you're looking to pay. And they can advise you on how much to save, how much to keep into your you know, business account. So you're not hit with the surprise tax bill. Uh, so, Fantastic. yeah, it's it, obviously it's good. But don't get me wrong. You know, this is for I guess that's more for growing businesses, for startups. Maybe you might not have enough, um, you know, resources to to get yourself an account on a on a quarterly basis. But these are good things to know. You can do your research. It's all on HMRC payments on account, and try and build some sort of structure within, um, you know, your business in terms of cash management. So you you don't get caught out. <laughs> yeah, and also for the coaches watching, because I know we've got coaches from all around the world. Uh, this is just a generic thing. So make sure that you speak to an accountant in whichever city or country that you're in, and they'll be able to advise you uh, more correctly on how to pay yourself uh, as a limited company or, or self-employed. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Unfortunately, I can't do, um, you know, any taxes in other countries because <laughs> of different tax laws. Um, but yeah, so, okay, now we're moving on to limited companies. Okay, so this is a common mistake that new directors make when they set up their own company. And what they're doing is, let's say they make money and they just take money out of the of the, the company bank account as if it's a an ATM, right? Doesn't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It, it, it's a bit more, you know, self-employed, you can, you can do that. But limited company, you are a separate legal entity, which means that you can't just take money as and when you want. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing to be um, to be aware of. And so how it really starts off with 
I'm going to just kind of go through a new business journey. So it's something very similar that you know you 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 went through Leo as well, and and a lot of other um, clients of mine is especially if you are financing the business yourself. Then what you do is you look, you'd essentially get send you know transfer money from your personal account to your business bank account, and you're essentially loaning that company money. Now there's going to be a time where your business starts being profitable and you want to start taking money out. A really good way to take money out first is by using what's called a director's loan account. Mm -hmm. And when you when you're transferring money to your limited company, that's going to give a credit to your director's loan account. And before, you know, talking about, you know, salaries and dividends and things, you can make use of this money, which is the money basically you've put into the company, but now you want to take it out. Yeah. And, you know, you want to be, obviously you want to be in a, we want to make sure that you keep an eye on that. You don't want to take out more money than you need to, because then there's other tax implications where, yeah, it becomes problematic as well. But that's a really good strategy to, to use um, before setting up a, a payroll scheme and start paying yourself, you know, a salary and things like that. Okay. So don't, don't use your company as an ATM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. this is the next bit now. So let's say, for example, you're a your business and you're, you've started taking out money of your DLA and your accountant says, look, your DLA is starting to run a bit low, but you want to still take more money out of the company. Let's look at take, you know, setting up a, a salary um, for you to take out every month. And what that entails is uh, a pay-as-you-earn scheme, which is a PAYE scheme, uh, which is done via HMRC and your accountant can do that for you. And what that allows you to do as a director is, you know, pay yourself a monthly amount. It can be variable as well. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, you start earning, um, you know, start having some profits in the business and you want to slowly increase the money you take out. So you can increase your salary there. One thing I would say is, there's obviously a sweet spot in terms of taking out money in a tax efficient way. And for a limited company at currently the most tax and look, this is, this, it is a case by case basis. It is different if you've got other employments and you're running your own limited company, or you've got a number of limited companies, definitely speak to your accountant about a bit more of the um, intricacies around that. But essentially it's paying up to your personal allowance. And one thing as well, to note is when you pay yourself a salary that essentially gets credited to your director's loan account i know it can be quite confusing mm -hmm. but bear with me here it you don't actually have to take that money out straight away right because when you pay yourself a salary as a limited company is an expense for the company mm -hmm. but having said that you do have to take it out nine months so it, the deadline to take out that money is nine months after your accounting year end, mm. right? So it's nine months after your accounting year end, you've got to make sure that any salary you've paid within that accounting period is taken out. Otherwise, it will still be money that you can still take out from the company, but it won't be uh, an allowable expense for corporation tax purposes. Okay. So this has, that's just a little nugget of... Um, of you know a bit of a tax nugget there um, um and next one is dividends so you pay yourself salary and you want to take more money out what do you do okay you want to take out dividends and that is another way on top of taking out salary to extract money from your your company one thing to watch out for is make sure that your company is is in profit yeah. And what that means is dividends is anything is this kind of um, the bit at the top that you can take out. Now, if your company is in a loss, unfortunately, you can't take out dividends. And that's what's called unlawful dividends. So hopefully that gives a bit of an overview on how to uh, take out money from your self-employed business or your limited company. No, I like that. Um, so. Any co for any coach watching that is maybe at the starting stage 
of their business. What what would you recommend in terms of going down the self-employed or going down the, the limited company route in order to pay themselves at the beginning? Yeah, so I think the, the best way to do it is is do your research. Do your research. Go, you know, go listen to podcasts, um, especially around this area. Like we've got a number of podcasts, so listen to them, um, have an idea about how it works, and then get in touch with an accountant. Most accountants will actually give you a you know free 30-minute consultation, which might just be enough to help you set up initially. Mm-hmm. and give and 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 allow you to have a bit of growth first and then contact them after about other ways of going about it but definitely speak to you know a professional about it do your research um and that will help you in the starting stages fantastic that that, that was also a great summary as well andrew <laughs> there we are <laughs> excellent <laughs> All right, Andrew. Well, thank you very much. Uh, if you have, if you guys watching have any questions for Andrew, leave them in the comment section. Right, uh, we will share all your questions with him and get back to you guys as soon as we can. Also, if you want to connect with Andrew, he does only work with coaches in the UK. So, if you're in the UK, description below this video, you can reach out to him to book a a call with him. So, Andrew, before we head out, anything else you'd like to add? No, that's it. That's it. You know, it's an exciting journey, sports coaches. So, um, so yeah, just get stuck in. <laughs> nice. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. And look forward to our next chat. Pleasure. Thanks, Leo.